God got me. All right. All right. All right. And when God tells you to move, you got to move. Okay. And when you're walking, when I don't lean on my own understanding. So I identified my purpose, and God said, hey, this is my path. I tried it my way. I tried it my way for 22 years, and I'm telling you, it didn't get me nowhere but about $60,000 in school debt. <laughs> now, if I could go back and pray to God for my purpose, back in 2008, I'd probably be debt free, but I had to learn that lesson. And I'm telling you now, learn it now. Find your purpose now, because there are some consequences when you're dealing outside of your purpose. Because God said, lean not in your understanding. I, would, I didn't understand that I'd be getting a PhD. I couldn't fathom it. But God is super, supernatural. All right, there is no limit to God. I can do all things. Like we, we sometimes, you know, and I'm just gonna talk to you. I'm sorry if I step on any toes. We say this: I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. But we don't believe it. All right, all right. Like we say it, but deep down inside, I want to go back to school, but I gotta take care of my kids. I want to do this, but oh no, nah, that's too much. I'm gonna settle for that. All right, God said I can, you can do all things through Him who strengthens you. That I just we just said the pledge, the sky is not the limit. Mm -hmm. Only you can stop you from doing what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So once you get into your purpose, God is gonna direct your path. You die to yourself. God, okay, it's my birthday. My friend's like, bro, it's your birthday. You could have told him that you could have told him that you was gonna speak tomorrow. Who am I to tell God what I'm gonna do on the day? I, I was in Las Vegas and they wanted me to speak on Sunday and I felt so bad because I, I wasn't going to be there. And then Ms. Ross hit me up and I was like, oh yeah, redemption. I did not But sometimes, what is a birthday without God? Oh, All right. Right. He gave you birth. Yeah. So I'd rather be, I woke up, this, this is my birthday, no lie. I woke up this morning and I said, oh, I need to paint my mom's house. She's like, oh, it's your birthday, but I'm going to paint my mom's house because I, I get a career out of doing stuff for other people. She gave me life, so that's the least I can do. Uh, right. Painted her house this morning, 6.15, and now I'm here. And what's the celebration? This is a celebration. I'm fulfilling my purpose. Yeah. All right. Once you find your purpose, it's a divine high, mm -hmm. a spirituality high that I can't even explain. Waking up every morning, I have to be to work at 7.30 and get into the school at 6.45. I can't explain it. Mm. Or leaving, coaching three sports, teaching five subjects, and you never get tired. I can't explain it. All right. It's an unnatural high. Not wanting to leave, but God, the, the hardest decision I ever had to make was to quit the field high school. But God said, trust in me now. I got you this far. <laughs> I said move. You move. That's God's purpose. Because what happens is you can walk in your purpose. But if you stop listening to God, you're going to be stagnant in life. Mm. A lot of people found their purpose, but they stagnant, they're comfortable. And if you're comfortable, that's the most dangerous place to be. Yes, Lord. You know, Mr. Jackson said he wanted to own his own restaurant. Mr. Jackson, you can own your own restaurant. As soon as you stop being comfortable, that came from God. Have mercy, Lord. Okay. That's it. That you better talk now. Hey, hey. I'm feeling it. Mm. You gotta move. When God say move, you gotta move and Yes, Lord. Because He's gonna provide. Okay? Why, well, amen. Mm -hmm. Number two, vision. Vision. With purpose, you gotta have a vision. When you don't have a vision, God gives you the vision. Okay? And vision is the plan to fulfill your purpose. What is your plan to fulfill your purpose? God gave you a purpose. What is your plan to fulfill it? Let's go to the word. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not evil, to give you a future and hope. Welfare. What does welfare mean? Good. Plans for you to do good. Plans for you to do the work of God. Because all our missions for Christians is to win people to Christ. That's right. So your purpose in God should be winning people to Christ. My purpose is education. If a child can't read, they can't read the Bible. All right. All right. If you can't under, if you haven't been educated of understanding, how could you understand what you're reading? How could you comprehend? It? All right. So vision. What is your vision? You gotta have a vision, and God is gonna give it to you. Now, when God told me you're gonna quit your job and you're gonna go to school, I was terrified. But then I, I, I wasn't terrified for long because God doesn't give you a, fear, a, a spirit of fear. I got kind of excited. I was like, okay, here's his vision. Uh, he said, you're at the Felt High School, but you're only impacting a couple hundred students. I want you to impact thousands. All right. All right. All right. All right when I started United in 2011, the vision was to just be at Alabama State. 
And then in 2014, God said, you got to grow. And I was like, okay, whatever. Let's, let's go. All right, so then I grew and started chapter in the Fiddle High School. And then last year, God said, you got to grow some more. And I was like, Jesus, ooh, you, you moving a little too fast. <laughs> <laughs> right? So it's like, you got to grow. Because you finna grow nationwide, worldwide. So now he's like, okay, a profit is non-profit. Well, Jesus, I don't have the money. And then my friend's like, okay, don't worry about it. We're going to pay for it. So now I apply for a non-profit, and we take a tax deductible uh, donation. And then he said, oh, no, you got to grow some more. So last year we became a nonprofit, and then one of the, the ladies in the community, she sent me a link and said, hey, God said apply for this $100,000 grant. And I was like, oh, Jesus. $100,000? I haven't seen that much money since Alabama State. It's like apply for it. It's like apply for it. It's not even the fact that if I get it or not, but it's God sent me up for bigger. Mm -hmm. Just apply yes. for it. Right. Just $100,000? Just apply for it. You said you want to grow? That'll buy you a bus to take the kids on the college tour every year. All right. That'll buy you a headquarters you can run out of. Right now we're running out of the church. And I love the church, but he said you got to grow. We just had a girl conference at the church, and we had about, United put it on, and we had about 30 kids. And it's funny because the girl was like, hey, here's a, I want to do this girl conference. She came in new. God brought her to me, not knowing that I was going to be leaving. I was like, I had been praying for somebody to come because I never wanted to counsel it. He brought her in, and she came with a girls' conference. I never been able to to, to connect with the females because that, that wasn't my purpose in life. She came in and started running. We did a girl conference, and then somebody told her, "Hey, you're gonna have to quit your job because you're gonna be doing this full time." Grow. God said, "Grow," and now we're growing. We're gonna need a building that's gonna house this conference every year. Mm -hmm. We're gonna need multiple buildings. If I'm gonna have chapters, we're gonna need money. Mm -hmm. So God said, "Grow." That's a vision I have to become a university president. God said, "Hey, here it is." Apply to this school, this school, this school. Okay. Accepted into this school, LSU, Georgia State, and Clemson. And then my fiance, because in marriage, you know, we learned that you got to be in agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to be in agreement. So it, it's not I, it's, it's we. So we got to sit down and we got to pray. And God sent her confirmation on Clemson, sent me confirmation on Clemson. And it's like, oh, wow. And then here's the question, here's the deal. She stays in Birmingham. People like, well, you, you going to Clemson? And she's in Birmingham. I said, hey, and God told me to move. Why would he tell me to move if he's not going to work it out? You know, she stayed in, I told her she stayed in Chicago. I stayed in Alabama. We worked it out thus far. See, what happens is people try to defer you. Yes. All right, people try to, because we already said lean not on your own understanding. Society understanding is once you get married, you got to move together. Well, society doesn't run my life. All right. I got word from the Lord. He said, you're going to take care of it. Then, hey, here we go. A month later, her boss come to her and said, hey, we can relocate you to Charlotte. Or we can relocate you to Atlanta. Either or. Or you can work from home. Ooh. Amen. Hey, <laughs> 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 so then, you got to have a vision. You got to be able to see. Now, here we go. Vision and sight. A lot of people see when they're blind. Mm. You got to protect your gate. You got two gates, your ear gate and your eye gate. Be careful what you're looking, to, looking at. Be careful, young people, because I listen to the crap you listen to, the music you listen to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crap. It's what crap. What goes in is going to come out. Yes. All right. All right. What goes in is going to come out. Yeah. So protect your gates, especially protect your eyes, because whatever you're looking at, that's what your mind is interpreting. Oh, this is okay. Fast money. This is okay. Okay, quick money. Oh, I can do this. This is okay. No, no, no. That's not of God's desire for you. All right? So vision. You got to have a vision. And God is going to give you that vision. And I'm not talking about eyes. I'm talking supernatural vision. What is God's plan for your life? All right? Here we go. What happens when you don't live in your purpose? That's a dangerous game to play. Okay, I'm here to tell you. Matthew 6. Yeah. Proverbs 19 and 21 says, Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. The purpose of the Lord that will stand. No. So that means anything else, it didn't say the purpose of the Lord and yours, or the purpose of the Lord and your mother's, or the purpose of the Lord and your, it said the purpose of the Lord only will stand. So that means if you're living in any other purpose, then the purpose of God is going to fail. Mm. That's it. Can't sugarcoat it. If you're doing anything that is not in your design purpose in life, it's going to fail. Right? 
People dying and say, oh, it was their time. No, it wasn't their time. They wasn't living in the purpose of God. He got no use for them. That was deep. God put mm-hmm. you on this earth to do something, to fulfill a purpose. So what use are you to God if you're not winning people to Christ? What are you living for? If you're not walking in a purpose, because he just said everything gets to fail, why are people losing their jobs? It wasn't their purpose in the first place. Why are mm. people getting laid off? It wasn't their purpose in the first place. Why are people in poverty? <coughs> They're not fulfilling their purpose. God didn't design for Christians to be poor. God did not design for Christians to be poor. All right. Why? Because God created the earth and everything in it. Mm-hmm. Right? And of the value, and of the gold, and of the silver, and of the diamond. God put it here, right? Mm-hmm. God put it here for his people to have. So why would God put it here and then tell you, you don't supposed to have it? Mm. It doesn't make sense. But many Christians believe that there's sovereignty in poverty. There's sovereignty in suffering. That's not the case. Why would God say, I will provide all your needs, but then turn around and allow you to live in poverty? All right. When you walk in God's purpose, he didn't say you'll be filthy rich, but he said his plan will stand. Mm-hmm. He'll fulfill all your needs. Everything since, since I began to walk in God's purpose has been fulfilled. Blessings on blessings. God said, I open up the windows. Mm-hmm. Not a window. He said, I open up the windows uh-huh. in heaven and pour you out of blessings that you don't even have enough room to receive. That's powerful. Right now, if I was to get a $100,000 grant, I don't even know what I'd spend it on. We don't even have enough expenses to spend a whole grant. So when you're walking in God's, God's purpose, there's some blessings that come with it. And that's the last thing we're going to talk about. Why do you want to find God's purpose? Because Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all things shall be added unto you. When we read that, you know, and I and I, I read this all my life, but I never really understood it until Pastor Moore, I learned and broke it down. I was listening to him and he said, all things. And then I got to thinking, he said, what is all things? All things. Seek ye first. So that means seeking after God and all things. He didn't leave all, he didn't say everything but money. He didn't say everything but a car. He didn't say everything but a house. He didn't say everything but a Gucci bag. He said, oh, I like Gucci. It's okay to have Gucci coach. It's okay because God said, seek who first? Ye he first. first. All things uh-huh. shall be added to you. Here we go. And I'm not, God just take me. This is why people live in poverty. Because they're not seeking God first. That's why you don't have all things. Because are you truly seeking God first? Seek ye first. And all things mm-hmm. shall be added to you. Right? That's when you're living in your purpose. When every decision you make is coming from God. Every decision I make comes from the Lord. Lord, what would you have me to do? And he showed me. What's my purpose? How can I use it? Am I supposed to be doing this? Because before I was living in my purpose, I was good at a lot of stuff. Played the drums for the church. Great speaker. Everything. But that wasn't my purpose. And what happens is, a lot of us are, we got talent. Amen. We got talent. But is it our purpose? Just because you're talented at it does not mean you're destined to do it. Mm. Just because you're talented at it does not mean you're destined to do it. Seek ye first. Don't just do it because you're good at it. Do it because God told you to do it. All right. All right. You see, what happens is, and this is the work of Satan. You're good at it, and then you do it. And you do it because you're good at it. But see, God said, well, if you would have done it, done what I wanted you to do, where you're making 50000 you could have been making 100000 Yeah, yeah. Where you, well, sometimes you, man, I, I hate I got to go to work today. But God saying, he said, hey, if you just would have found your purpose through me, you'll never have that problem. Purpose, vision. It's like a light bulb. And in closing, a light bulb is going to be a light bulb, right? Mm-hmm. It's just a light bulb. What is a light bulb designed to do? Give light. light. Mm-hmm. All right? The light bulb is either, either going to give off light or it's not. God is saying, you are a light bulb. 
give out life.